Greetings, fellow gorehounds, and welcome back to a blood splattered vlog. I'm the horror guru. And I'm Count Jackula Claus. And he's Count Jackula Claus, which he's usually Count Scrooge Claus, but I guess he's Count ja Count Jackula. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, here's the thing. Turns out, uh, I, I actually kind of like Christmas when I don't have to, like, go outside Fair. or yeah. fucking deal with people I don't want to deal with or Fair. shit like that. You know, turns out. That 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 core idea of like just getting people presents and like <laughs> having to say, hey, I have some fucking cookies. Like that's actually pretty righteous. I'm actually pretty okay with that. Understandably so. Yeah. Yeah. That, yeah. That, it's, that. it's just whenever I have to deal with the like, there's a war on. Oh my god, just shut the fuck up. <laughs> Speaking you know? of war on Christmas, the movie we are talking about today is Violent Night from the director of Dead Snow and starring David Harbour of Stranger Things fame as Santa Claus in essentially Die Hard with Santa Claus. Not a guy dressed up as Santa Claus. Yeah, he's actually Santa. Literally Santa Claus. Basically, he's delivering presents to this one rich person's house. As the rich person ends up being under siege from these uh, essentially bank robbers, but instead of robbing a bank, they're robbing the rich person's vault. And that's, yeah. that's and the they plot. they are led by John Leguizamo. Yes, yes, who plays- Mario, a... Luigi Mario himself. Yes, who plays a character named Mr. Scrooge. That's not his actual name, that's just his code name because everything's Christmas themed in this. And uh, basically uh, Santa, you know, has to fight the bad guys to save the little girl in the house. And that's, that's the that's movie. That's the movie. Now, uh, a couple things to uh, make very clear about this movie. This movie is not a horror movie. I know some people thought with the title Violent Night and with the poster of like the bloody, yeah. bloody Saint Nick that this was going to be another Killer Santa Claus movie. No, no, no. Well, I mean, it is, yes. but not, not, not like Silent Night Deadly. No, no, no. Th this is way more like Die Hard. This is an action flick through and through. A hilarious action flick. There's a cartoony amount of like gore and violence. Yeah, in this thing. 100%. And Santa Claus is one of the main perpetrators of a lot of that violence. Like the bad guys do their shit. Don't get me wrong. They they, they do their own. But uh, uh, Santa Claus being our protagonist and being the guy we follow for most of the movie does most of the violence against these bad guys. Yeah, because it turns out, hey, someone else understood the connection between Vikings and Santa Claus. Yes, yes. So it turns out Santa Claus is actually an old, like, fucking Viking raider. Yep. He's got, like, these runes all over him that are a mix of, like, he's got, like, a snowflake on there, but then he's got, like, these Viking runes. Yeah, he's got, like, Christmas-themed, <laughs> like, Viking runes all yeah. over his upper body. And I'm sure, like, there's probably shit written in, like, Swedish on him if we oh, were to yeah. look closely or oh, something. yeah, 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 yeah. This movie is about a Santa Claus who's getting too old for this shit. Yeah. He's reached this point in his career where he doesn't know what the point of being Santa Claus is anymore. He delivers presents only to deliver like a momentary moment of joy for these pe kids. And then they want the next present because it's all consumerism. It's yeah. all capitalism and money and greed. And no one really understands the spirit of Christmas anymore. So he's become an alcoholic. <laughs> Though I got the impression he's always kind of been a heavy drinker, given the fact that he's a Viking. Yeah. yeah. But obviously he's not drinking for happy reasons now. He's drinking for sad reasons yeah. now. He's like, God, I got to go. All right, let's get fucking the Eastern Seaboard done. Let's do this. So you get a portion of this movie of him being drunk in Santa that's kind of like bad Santa light, where he's like doing shit like throwing up on, on, on women and shit. The thing is, you get the feeling he's not like mean. He's no. just very uncouth. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, he's just a little gross. Absolutely. Absolutely. And then you get like the diehard portion where he's running around, like kicking people's ass. Doesn't know how to know him, do it, use a machine gun because he's never actually like Shot a gun before. Shot a gun before. Yeah. He's never had to. The last time he was a warrior was back in the Viking age. So, so he, he just knows had how to. Like a huge hammer. That he kills yeah. People with. A hammer that he loves. Oh my God. I love this movie. Yeah. This movie is a blast. This is one of those movies that's going to end up on my yearly Christmas rotation without a doubt. Yes. You know, like, like it's going to be up there, like uh, with Krampus, with Gremlins, with Die Hard, all the usual Christmas staples. This one's going to slot right yeah, in with yeah. them. Yeah, yeah. This, this reminds me a lot of that, like, Don. Cheadle Captain Planet. Yeah. It's like a lot of David Arbor being like, believe in Saint Christmas kids or I'll motherfucking kill you. <laughs> Well, he's not going to kill the kids. Not the kids. Not the kids. That's yeah, true. Yeah. No, it, it, it's it's the adults that are trying to kill the kids that he's after. Yeah. The he, kids may change. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. Kids can be good. There's even a kid in this movie that's kind of a piece of shit that kind of has a mini arc going on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He goes, he, yeah. he shifts around a bit. You know, he you doesn't know? 100% become a good kid, but he's on the path, right? Yeah. Right. Yeah, he's getting better. <laughs> the main kid that he's trying to save, who is uh, this just perfect little girl. Yeah, yeah, like yeah. She's, the she's, perfect she, cherubic little girl. Yeah, you know, yeah. like she... she, she You're going to save me from the terrorists, right, Santa Claus? Yeah. Like, she's a character. Don't get me wrong. She has her wants. She has her needs. But ultimately, in this movie, she is the symbol of Christmas purity, of what yeah. Christmas is supposed to mean and what it is and what it's all about. She is the match that ignites the Christmas fire back in Santa Claus. Yeah, yeah, because he's like, oh, I can't fucking leave let this yeah. little girl get killed, you know, God damn it. <laughs> and then, of course, you have John Leguizamo, who's not just called Scrooge. He's also a man who vehemently hates Christmas. Yes. For very valid reasons, but he also takes it so far that, you know, I mean, he's trying to kill people inside of like... like yeah, 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 you know? yeah, yeah. I feel like that's a character I could have played really well. Oh, yeah, for sure, for sure. And John Leguizamo rocks in this Oh, role. he does. He's not only funny, he's also menacing, which is something I don't normally say about John Leguizamo. People often forget how well he played a violator in Spawn. True, true, this, yeah. You know, because Spawn is otherwise such a shitty movie. And, and, and the funny thing is, this is a completely different performance than Violator. Oh, yeah, totally. But it's just as menacing, right? Yeah, you know? yeah, you're actually afraid of him. Yeah, you know? absolutely. Even though, like, you get, like, him standing next to David Harbour, and David Harbour towers over him because that oh, man is Jesus, gigantic. Oh, yeah. <laughs> He's still somehow yeah. intimidating, and you still buy him fist fighting David Harbour. You know? Yeah, <laughs> movie pulled off a really good trick there. Oh yeah, you know? absolutely. This movie also throws in a little bit of Home Alone. Oh yeah, there's bits yeah. with the uh, with the little girl who uh, just watched Home Alone before she went to this yeah, uh, so Christmas she's, party. And she's like a seven year old kid, so she's yeah. obsessed with it. So when the bad guys start doing their thing, and she manages to like you know peel away from them, she starts setting up her own Home Alone trap. So while you have Sam. Santa Claus going off there doing the Die Hard thing. You have the little girl doing the Home Alone thing. So you have this like perfect marriage of both movies. Yeah, but and the the Home Alone traps, however, are pretty lethal. Oh God, they're like, super people lethal. Ju- like if someone gets hit in the head with a bully, you're like, yeah, yeah, that motherfucker is dead. Oh yeah, oh yeah. They don't just let the person die. They make it an agonizing, excruciating oh my God, death. That one guy fucking going up the attic ladder. Oh, that was Holy rough. Holy shit, that's super rough. We're not gonna spoil that. Yeah, yet, yeah, yeah. yeah. There is a five minute scene of a guy trying to get up a ladder as he is slowly being <laughs> mutilated by these traps. It's amazing. He just wants to get up that ladder and holy shit, yeah. is, that, <laughs> is that not an easy task? <laughs> because he's Santa Claus, once he identifies who each villain is, he's able to like break down their history because he knows them, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're on the naughty list. Like he doesn't know? look at someone and automatically know who they are, like Miracle on 34th Street or anything. Right. But he looks at someone and if he like sees their name in his naughty list, he'll be reminded, oh shit, okay, yeah, I remember this kid. He wanted a bicycle. And then like, yeah. you know, yeah. and I like the moments where he's playing like mind games with them with that. It's not really mind games. He's being genuine, well, he's, but it's fucking with their heads. Yeah, he's <laughs> trying to get them to like, yeah. not not be on the naughty list. Yeah. But they're bad guys, so that doesn't work. That's the thing that separates this from something like Die Hard, is that he is genuinely trying to get the bad guys to not be bad guys up until the bitter end. Yeah. Given the kind of movie it is, yeah, for the most part, he fails. Yeah, yeah. You know? <laughs> yeah. You wouldn't get the uh, the gratuitous John Wick-style ultraviolence. Only somewhat John Wick-style. John Wick, like, John Wick yeah, does Yeah, well, not as beautifully choreographed yeah. as John well, Wick. It, it's but... messier, but because John Wick is like, it's like a dance, right? Like yeah. he's like a he's a maestro. He 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 he's like perfect in all his movements and all his uh, yeah um, setups and payoffs. This is a drunken Viking Santa Claus. Yeah, he's more of a berserker. Also, yeah, who's also like his yeah. heart's not really in it because he doesn't yeah. really want to be killing people at yeah, yeah. a certain point in the movie. Yeah, you know. <laughs> so he's more like a berserker or a barbarian, just barreling yeah. his way through this. And and for most of the movie, there's like a point in the movie in which he decides, okay, I am going to stop these people 100%. But for most of the movie up until that point, he's kind of reluctantly ending up in these like yeah. scenarios. So he's like either accidentally or just out of desperation hurting these guys. Yeah, yeah. A lot of the early kills of the bad guys are basically death by misadventure. Yeah, yeah. You know, like Santa Claus didn't really mean to kill them. They just happened to die. It's not like completely Tucker and Dale, but there's an element of that in yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There is a bit of Tucker and Dale in this where you're just like, 
What the hell just happened? Yeah, yeah. Now, I do want to issue one major warning. David Harbour's awesome. The little girl's awesome. John Leguizamo is a fun villain to watch. The little girl's fam family are hilarious, but also insufferable. Yeah. Your results may vary. You might find them utterly hilarious the same way you find, like, uh, something like... Um, Arrested uh, Development really funny, or you're just gonna watch them and want them all to die. <laughs> yeah, like this movie is a really bizarre combination of Home Alone, Die Hard 2, yeah, and The Ref. Yeah, I could see that. Yeah, you know? I could see a lot of The Ref in this. All the Christmas classics. Yeah. <laughs> I highly recommend this movie. It just hit streaming so you can go and rent it yourself and I highly recommend you do especially since it's still the holiday season sit down with the adults in your family and watch this movie and if you have a kid that likes R-rated movies and you let watch R-rated movies show them this movie too because yeah. this little girl is a hero to strive for <laughs> yeah and I also she's got, a role model <laughs> oh my god actually my my favorite moment in the movie where I was like all right, movie, let's bring this home. You got to bring this home. The last kill. Oh, yeah. Holy oh, crap. Oh, yeah. I'm sitting there going, this is the joke that started the whole movie. Yeah, yeah. This is the idea that spawned the whole movie. Absolutely. <laughs> Violent Night, ask for it by name, and let us move on to the spoilers. It's one of those movies where I'm like, I'm not exactly sure what you can really spoil because you know where this movie is going oh, yeah. from word one. Oh, yeah. Well, we you can. Know, some of the details are surprising. Well, we but... can talk about some of like our favorite moments that like we don't want to like ruin for someone. Okay. Like yeah. a great example being, okay, in this movie, Santa Claus does have magic. Yeah. He doesn't quite know how the magic necessarily works. Like he knows what how to do stuff, but he doesn't know where it came from or why. Yeah, he's... yeah. He doesn't know why when he twinkles, touches and twinkles his nose, he goes right up a chimney. He just knows he can do it. Yeah. You know, so he twinkles his nose and he'll go up the chimney. He knows that he'll open his bag and it'll be filled with toys, and it will most likely be a toy for whoever's in the house at the moment. You right. Know? The plane is on autopilot, and I'm just there to make sure it doesn't crash. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know. He has a scroll that he opens up and it tells mm -hmm. him whoever in the house is on the naughty list or the nice list. And they don't really go into like why that is or how he became Santa Claus. All you know is that at one point he was a Viking and at one point between then and now, he ended up being Santa Claus for a thousand years. Yeah. But here's the thing, because he has this magic, that means it leads to some really interesting moments. One being the one you just mentioned yes. in which uh, he's in this final fight with John Leguizamo. And John Leguizamo has realized that he actually is Santa Claus. He spent the entire movie in denial about it. And he's like, no, he's Santa Claus. But if I kill Santa Claus, I will end Christmas forever and fuck Christmas. Yeah. So he ends up in like just a straight up like fist fight. Well, it's fist fight, but they're also using weapons, like hand weapons. And so they're fighting and shit. And this ultimately leads to them being in this abandoned cabin with this broken down chimney. He's got this Santa Claus pinned up against the chimney. He's gonna deliver the final killing blow. And he's just like, um, Christmas is now gonna be dead forever. He said something like that. Like, yeah. Christmas is now gonna be de dead forever and I killed it. And then, and then David Hart uh, just responds with not if you believe and then he twinkles his nose and goes up the chimney but only he will go up the chimney magically as a puff of smoke yeah John Leguizamo physically is pulled into the, the chimney, chimney and flies <laughs> apart yeah his body is fucking ripped apart by going up the chimney like like someone getting sucked out of an airlock or yeah. something yeah you're just like or blown what? out of an airlock <laughs> I never thought of that one. Yeah, yeah. I, I didn't think of that one. It was something I had never seen I'd before. I'd never seen it before, yeah. But Santa Claus is fucking injured at this point. So, like, the family who has been through this fucking siege, they bring Santa back to life because they believe in him. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, to be fair, he has demonstrated, like, magic power. Yeah, yeah. And it's just really like, like clap if you believe in fairies moment. Yeah. And you know how in Die Hard, John McClane talks to that cop outside on the walkie talkie. Oh my God, this detail, yeah. yeah. And they have those moments where like the movie slows down a little bit and they have those heart to heart where they learn something about each other and they bond. And uh, this allows like, you know, the, the cop to believe that John McClane is who he yeah. is, is genuine. And this allows John McClane to believe there's someone on the outside that he, he can trust. They do that same thing in this movie, except instead of the cop 
cop, it's the little girl and him. Yeah, it's a little girl and Santa. And so, yeah. like, she's telling her story and he's telling his story, and she is reinvigorating his belief in Christmas through her genuineness, and he is convincing her that he is genuinely Santa Claus. Yeah. Which is giving her hope in this entire situation. Yeah, yeah. It's so early... it's the same setup. Yeah. yeah but completely different situation. Setup. Yeah. It's... It was really good. Scrooge is one of those villains where he's kind of right. Oh yeah, but but it, it, but he takes it so far that he's a bad guy, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's basically yeah, you're kind of right, except you're threatening to kill this little girl. Yeah, exactly, so, uh, exactly. And I'm not sure like, I'm cool with that. His whole dissertation know? about like growing up poor, not getting any presents, and then watching the rich family next door get all this this wealth and glory. Where was Santa Claus for him? Where was this Christmas joy for him? Like he's not wrong to hate Christmas, and he's not wrong that. Overall, Christmas is a holiday that only those with wealth can enjoy. Yeah. At least the way, you know, America does it. And he's also not wrong that like, hey, like all this magic, all this whatever, and and and, and all you did was bring that rich kid like a bicycle. He's not wrong, but that just makes him a more compelling villain. Yeah. Right? You know, oh, oh, that's another detail. Like it's obvious that like, this was also a low point where he was like on the outs with Mrs. Claus. Yeah. yeah. Until the very end where like, like the reindeer show up and they've delivered his hammer and it, it turns out Mrs. Claus like, yeah. had the hammer sent to him. And you have that, you have that like, oh, I really want to meet Mrs. Claus. Yeah, I want to meet yeah. Viking Mrs. Claus. I read something that they're talking about maybe getting Charlize Theron to appear as Mrs. Claus in like a Violent Night 2. That, that would be great. I, I would love that. Just give me a Violent Night 2 and make Mrs. Claus a part of the plot because yes. I think that would be amazing. Yeah. <laughs> Violent Night 2 has to be people infiltrating yeah, the North Pole. Yeah, it has Pole. to be at the North Pole, baby. Yeah, they got it. You infiltrate know? the North Pole. <laughs> that's, that's how it goes. First you do the movie about Santa Claus, then you gotta take it to yeah. the North Pole. That's the way it fucking exactly. works. Exactly, exactly. I wanna see some like the fucking intro to Scrooge levels of <laughs> shit. The night the reindeer yep. died. You know, Another God movie that's it. on my yearly Christmas. Uh, yeah, Scrooge. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I love Scrooge. With that said, where can they find you, Count Jacula? Oh, you can find me on Twitter. Sure, still at Counting Jack. You can also find me on Mastodon at Count Jackula at Horror Club. Dot. Oh fuck! I'm gonna put it on screen. So but yeah, just just put put it up there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You can I, read it. I'll I'll, I'll 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 memorize it eventually. And you can also follow me on Twitch, where I stream throughout the week. And you can find me there at Count underscore Jackula. And of course, you can find me on Instagram at Satanic Jackula. I might be using that a little more often. Sure. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. What about you? Y'all know me. I'm the Horror Guru. You can find me at the Horror Guru on Twitter, on Twitch, on Instagram, and Facebook. I do have a Mastodon account now that I'll also link here. I also have a Hive account, which is also at the Horror Guru. And uh, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And don't forget to ring that notification bell so that you're notified of my videos immediately upon their upload. And if you would like to help out either of us more directly, be sure to check out our Patreon pages. And remember, even a dollar a month can go a long way. Oh, our hashtag. Oh yeah, 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 that's hashtag. right. Favorite hammer. Favorite hammer? All right. Favorite hammer. Use the hashtag favorite hammer, that way I know, that way Jack knows, that way the whole world knows. You watch this vlog all the way through. And yes, this vlog is rusty because we haven't recorded one in like two months. Um, yeah, <laughs> we're apologize. also testing out some new equipment. Yeah, so. yeah. And uh, with that said, peace out and I'll catch y'all later.